Hello everyone, my name is James Bellissimo and I'm the town manager of Berwick. And I have uh, quite a few updates, uh, happy to share. There's a lot of uh, great things going on in the town. We're right in the middle of budget season, right in the middle of ele the election process actually. In the budget season, we're wrapping up next week and we'll have the uh, draft budget ready for your review. Um, shortly after the budget is finalized after March 8th. They'll be at the town website under government, town manager, and you can see the budgets for this year and the previous years. We follow the same process every year. It's, it's cyclical, so we start the process in November where um, Lisa and myself met with department heads, met with um, other stakeholder groups. Um, we, we solicited um, uh, budget requests from agencies and from November through February, we we crunched the numbers uh, and we're, the budget's really about putting into place the short-term goals and aligning the long-term goals by aligning the money and the resources to make things happen. There's a lot of, a lot of great things happening. So uh, through February, three meetings were held with the select board uh, to go over the budget and those meetings are available on BCM. The uh, planning board held a public hearing on various ordinance amendments. They're extremely busy and uh, Envision Berwick proposed a significant change to the sign ordinance and they're excited about those changes. Um, it was really impressive what the planning department and planning board was, was able to do in a relatively short uh, period of time. So what's gonna happen in March, as I mentioned, we're gonna finalize the budget, finalize the warrant articles that'll all be available at the town and clerk section on the town website. June 14th is election day. And as I mentioned, this process, it really never starts. As soon as the June vote's done, we're on our way to getting November started. Once November's done, we're on our way to June. So what that means for you is you can always follow along in the process at any time and participate in the process at any time. So that's budget and elections. Um, we have a lot of projects going on. Uh, one of the major projects is our water plant upgrades. And what we're looking to do is add in, the major piece is adding in a pre-treatment process. And we have two main op options and we'll be testing this summer when the uh, manganese is higher to make sure that the process is working. Um, the good news is the engineer and the process that we're looking to put into place, we know it works with the Salmon Falls River because Summersworth put in a similar process. Um, additionally, we're looking at adding in possibly an additional intake structure from the Salmon Falls River. When we take the water from Salmon Falls at different levels, depending on where the season is at, there's different particulates in, in the river. So changing the levels of where the water is being taken from will be to our advantage. Uh, and also we're looking at adding in a lagoon system for our wastewater to be able to sit in a lagoon system and for the matter to settle in and we can recycle our water. So those are exciting upgrades and uh, we just received word that with the $1.2 million bond we recently were, was awarded, that 247,000 of it will be forgiven. Um, there's some major infrastructure funding and ARPA funds, and I think this is a sign of things to come for the town with the funding that's available. So again, that's close to a quarter million dollars that will be forgiven on that bond. Uh, over the weekend of February 20. 25th uh, became aware that we had two accidents. One that happened downtown, there's a pedestrian accident and there's one on Route 4. Um, and I take that very seriously. I mean, those are those two accidents are gonna impact people's lives forever and everyone involved. The goal always is to make our roads and streets safer. And ultimately, I'm an idealist. I mean, I feel very strongly about this. I think over the long term, we can make our streets safe. And what that requires is engineering, uh, traffic calming, 
signage, rumble strips, um, and traffic calming could be paint. It could be, um, in some, some instances, it's narrowing the streets to slow down traffic. It's designing the streets. So it's um, a slower speed. It's increasing the sight, sight line distances. And um, I, think, I think it can be done. And, and in terms of Route 4, we have done some of those things. We have added signs. We have added rumble strips. And what's up next are turn lanes. So be on the lookout for that. It is a process that we will be working with DOT and different stakeholders to work on funding these types of projects. For the downtown, we do have funding aligned to improve the crosswalks in the area of Kenny Bunk Savings. We're looking at moving a crosswalk so pedestrians are more visible and they're on the crosswalk a shorter amount of time. And pedestrian safety is all about the changes that we're doing downtown. We want people to feel safe and um, frequenting the recreational areas and our businesses. It's gotta be walkable and it's gotta be safe. One of the, and, and along the same lines, uh, we have a project, it's an Envision Berwick ad hoc committee called Dig a Hole Once. And it's all about getting projects engineered or conceptually to a level where we consider them shovel ready or along that spectrum of, hey, this is a good idea. Let's create a concept. Let's do some preliminary engineering, full engineering. Once it's fully engineered, it is now shovel ready. You just need a construction company to come out and con construct the improvements. Dig a Hole Once uh, has established um, 17 different projects in the village area. And the, the plan and the strategy is for the town to pay for the conceptual, which is a fraction of the cost, and to strategically identify funding opportunities and leverage opportunities to get those 17 projects done at a fraction of the cost. And in some instances, we are well, we're, we're ahead of schedule. We've received word on two big chunks of money to offset a lot of those costs. So digging a hole once, it's, it's what's underground first. So it's taking care of the stormwater. We're an MS4 uh, community. So you see the grates, the manholes in the ground, the rain goes into those, they're piped underground, and they eventually make their way to the Salmon Falls River. We're aware of some deficiencies. We've had some flooding issues um, in, in the downtown. So we need to address the stormwater, but not only stormwater is underground, we wanna bring the utilities underground as well. And so the utilities tend to go under the sidewalks. So there's a phasing strategy at, at hand where we need to make sure we're doing the things underground first and then we're putting back the streets. And I have some uh, renderings to share during this presentation that shows a great example of what's underground. And then once we get above ground of what that looks like, that's ornamental lighting, that's benches, uh, traffic calming measures, um, rain gardens, things of that nature. We have two bridges that need major work the Diamond Hill Bridge and the Ridland Road Bridge. The Diamond Hill Bridge is proposed to be on the warrant for funding this year. The Ridland Road Bridge, the plan for now is to hold off until we can have a 50-50 match with DOT, and that requires a getting on a list, and it takes a couple of years to get, your, get our names up on that list to get that funded for 50-50. Diamond Hill Bridge, can't wait any longer. We really need to get that done, probably looking at um, next winter time to get that done. We, the, another project uh, where we've met with a town hall building committee, and that's members of the borough community and stakeholders, department heads, users of the town hall. One of the major goals is to improve ADA accessibility into the town hall into the auditorium. So we've gone back and forth on 
replacing our wheel wheelchair lift, which is just prone to breaking because that, that's just what they do. And we're looking at funding a vertical lift, which instead of going diagonally up, which causes many issues structurally, it goes straight up. And not only would that increase the weight limits so we could actually use it for more um, for more uses, it um, it's safer. I mean, it feels safer. You're not kind of dangling out and wondering if the thing's going to stall or it's just not a comfortable feeling to be on that uh, wheelchair lift. The next priority is to address mold issues. We've had some mold issues uh, in the town hall. The big thing is, the biggest bang for our buck is reinstalling gutters on our roofs to get the water, the rainwater away from our foundation. We, are, we also have, we have one side of our, the bricks that are sealed. We need to seal around the bricks or around the town hall, the bricks around the town hall. And um, we can make some HVAC improvements uh, in the summertime, the humidity is extremely high in the um, in the lobby, and for some, it's pretty low hanging fruit to add a dehumidifier for uh, downstairs. Um, so, recre for recreation for Memorial Field, the uh, there's an exciting project for the summer. Phase one of Memorial Field improvements includes reconfiguring the heart of Memorial Field. Right now as it sits, basketball court is angled in a way, takes up a lot of space. The courts don't really have a specified use. There's basketball courts, they're, they need to be resurfaced. The playgrounds are in an unsafe area for foul balls. So by pivoting in making the space more efficient, we can gain some space, add functionality, and reestablish the predominant uses of the basketball court, and we have plans to convert one of the basketball courts to a pickleball court. So that's work we're looking to do for this year. Additionally, we hope to close on adding three acres to Memorial Field, and in the short term, those three acres, which is by the soccer field, will be passive walking trails with a long-term goal of adding a new facility, a whole new field. And the last thing I have is a save the date. Uh, lawn chairs, bringing lawn chairs to Sullivan Square is back this summer, and that's August 6th and August 20th from around 4 to 8 p.m. So very excited for that, and uh, everyone's in, invited to help plan and participate. If you've got any questions, it can be reached at 207 698 1101 extension 111 or town manager at brokemain.org thank you for your time and i'll see you next time